you go into your 40s and 50s and people say it's midlife crisis. It's really not a midlife crisis. It's a moment of questioning. It's a moment of a realization. And sometimes these realizations come with at a cost. They come with a level of crisis or with some kind of tower moment that happens in your life. But that's the time where we actually make the conscious choice of how you're going to live your life. Your life actually starts at 50. <laughs> Welcome to the Midlife Reinvention Podcast. I'm your host, Kavita, and the founder of Power Purpose Play, a global community of women in midlife. I'm here to tell you that it's your time now to rediscover what has always been inside of you and bring that out into the world. If you're wondering what's next, but don't know quite what that is, or if you feel a twinge in your heart telling you that you have so much more to do and so much more to offer, you're in the right place. Ask yourself, if not now, when? Do you want to leave your job? Start your own business? Take control of your health? Reignite the passion in your marriage? Write that book, or at least that first chapter? Transitions like this can be daunting. But through listening to my story and interviews with incredible women every week, I hope to inspire you to take action. I rediscovered myself after the age of 50, and I know you can too. It's my time now to help you do just that. I'm so excited you're here. Let's dive in. Welcome to this next episode of the Midlife Reinvention Podcast. I am so thrilled to have reached the milestone of 20 episodes, and I, I really can't believe how time has flown by so fast. I hope you've enjoyed listening to each weekly episode, and as our guests really do provide such great information and inspiration to help you make your next chapter in life the best chapter ever. You will, I'm sure, be very inspired this week to learn from Dina Martins. Dina is an ex-corporate executive turned entrepreneur and career strategist. Her mission is to raise the happiness quotient in corporate America from the bottom up. Her practice blends her extensive knowledge of astrology and numerology with proven business methods and tools to help professional women discover their life purpose and make it their dream job. She is also the co-founder of Gen X Woman, a media and marketing company with a mission to highlight the accomplishments of the women of Generation X while working closely with brands on how to reach and speak to the Gen X women the way she deserves to be spoken to. Such a pleasure to have you on the show today, Dina. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Kavita. I appreciate the invite. Yes. Uh, forward to this. <laughs> Your mission resonates so much with mine because it's very similar and I just can't wait to hear more about it. So maybe we just get right into it and, and tell us, tell our audience about your story. And I just mentioned that you went from the corporate world to entrepreneurship. And can you tell us a little bit about that story and, and what, why you made the transition? Sure. Yeah, I mean, my story is not very different from many women that reach their 40s and start asking the question, is this it? And, and you're at a crossroads where you can decide to continue on that road, whatever that may be, or make a change to a more fulfilling life. And for me, the crossroads meant a lot of resistance at work. So it wasn't just a decision that I just decided one day, woke up and I'm like, mm, I'm going to go for a more fulfilling life. Right. But I reached a pinnacle in my career. I got to a vice president role, which was I was working my entire career to climb that corporate ladder and get there and got the job. And, and I think I was happy for a day. And I, <laughs> I really what, 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 sorry, what, what job, what career was it? At? What industry were you in? Yeah. So I was in supply chain. Okay. The field that I operate in. And so I worked in multiple industries, but within the supply chain, I had this goal of becoming a vice president of supply chain. I was going for it. And so that's kind of was working on, I would say my entire mid thirties mm -hmm. to kind of get to that, to that job. And it was so anticlimactic, I would call it when I, when I got the job and it's like, okay, now what? And not only that, that job really became one of the worst experiences that I had in my career 
it was just not the right fit, not the right company for me. And so it was, I had a lot of signs, what I call a lot of signs from the universe and I wasn't listening. And so I got thumps upside the head. <laughs> the universe <laughs> moved me the right direction. I think Oprah said it. The universe speaks to you in whispers. And then it, it goes up to a, a brick falling over your head. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I think that's what it was. <laughs> that's so interesting because you had this vision. that's like, I want to be vice president. And then you said the day one, you were, you were like, okay, is this it? That's, that's yeah. like, we put these, we put these big aspirations on ourselves and then, and then sometimes we can just get disappointed, right? Yeah. And you just yeah. think this external thing, this external validation is a milestone for happiness or joy or fulfillment. And it's really not. It's more of a societal, it's more of an expectation in terms of what it is to climb the corporate ladder, but it's really not necessarily aligned with who you are and your purpose. And so you get there and you're like, okay. And the worst, I think, part about that is that I got there and I felt like I didn't have another goal to strive for. And it's like, I got that. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I wanted to be CEO or I wanted to be something else. I just reached a, a, a space where um, I ran out of goals. <laughs> and so I didn't have that drive again to push me to somewhere else. And it, I was more left with questions than what to do next in terms of action. Yes. And so, so that's, I think it was a very big turning point for me. And I still didn't listen, even though I, I didn't feel happy. I was like, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to get happy. I'm going to force that happiness and that fulfillment. Yes. And part of it is also there is a shame to admit in you're not happy when so many people want to be in your shoes. And I think, I think the higher you get, not the, they call it like the harder you fall, but more like the, the higher the expectations of other people around you. And, and it's very difficult to express that vulnerability that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I worked this hard, but yeah. I'm too- shaking my head. You can't like, if you're, if you're watching this, I'm, I'm, I'm nodding my head because I completely resonate with what you're saying, because sometimes you, you reach a goal or, or a role within your, within your company or in your, in your career. And you, everybody thinks, wow, she's made it or her life is perfect. <laughs> and from the outside, it seems as though that, that may be the case, but inside it's a completely different story. So how long did it take you to get that thump on the head from the universe <laughs> to, to listen to it? In other words, <laughs> to be honest, it was very quickly. And I guess we'll talk about it a little bit about my, the numerology aspect of that, but it, I reached that milestone. I believe I was 41 and very quickly things started going downhill in terms of this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And even though I left that role, went to another company, different city, different people, different industry, but that feeling of lack fulfillment, that feeling of feeling stuck just remained. And I just couldn't anymore make it work. I couldn't push through. Can so ignore it, right? Yeah, it yeah. just it, it was it was screaming at me. Sometimes I say your 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 soul's calling is now getting louder than anything else in your life. And and I just couldn't do it any longer and I literally just quit call turkey wow. <laughs> from great job, which I would call a great job, from a great company. It just was no longer aligned and it was a I would say a two year journey for me. It was two I would say two three years. It was very quick in terms of you can't, you can't continue. Yes. Interesting. Cause it was around three, two to three years as well for me until I finally made the move. So interesting parallel there. So Dina, how did you actually find the courage then to, to finally make the leap and, and go after and try to f- go after your purpose? And I understand that while well, you let leaving a comfortable career and I understand the reinvention that you went through brought you to multiple kind of expressions of your life purpose. So maybe you can talk about the courage piece a little bit and then what you did after that. Sure. I call courage. It's like building a six pack. It doesn't happen overnight, (laughs) right? You have to build that one muscle at a time. And it started with me knowing and recognizing that I was scared, (laughs) 
that I was worried about failing, that I was too comfortable, that I was making a dumb move. There were so many things that were going there. And to add to it, I didn't know what I wanted to do really. So at the time that I made the decision to leave, I had no idea what my purpose was. I needed to to leave to find it. I was too busy, too much into the day-to-day for me to, to disconnect. And so, and I, I actually, I think I posted the story in my LinkedIn where I decided to go skydiving. That was the ultimate of my building that wow. six back. Like, yeah. I'm not a daredevil. People know me. They're like, what? <laughs> no way. They cannot believe it. I, I always thought this was dumb. Like, and if you die falling off, that's your fault, right? I'm like, right. Like, you chose to jump off the plane. <laughs> yeah. I have nobody else to play. Yeah, and yeah. so, and so I just, I was so afraid because it was, for me, it represented letting go, surrendering, letting go of control. And I needed to let go of control, surrender and trust that I'll be okay. And skydiving helps me do that. Now, I don't recommend it for everybody, but (laughs) it did help me do that because I had so many expectations before I went in there that, oh my God, like something's going to happen literally. And I don't know if I should say that out loud, that I was going to pee my pants (laughs) in the process. Are you talking about the skydiving piece? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I I probably would. (laughs) Well, they say that a lot of people do. (laughs) Yeah. So I was natural. (laughs) (laughs) I was preparing for the worst case scenario. I was telling uh, my tandem instructor, "I'm like, I'm probably not going to want to go out. Push me." (laughs) So, and I had all these thoughts. Oh my god, did I add my mother to my 401k? Oh my God. <laughs> there were so many insane thoughts, right? which is the same insanity that we go through when we decide to leave a comfort zone. There's so many thoughts and fears that don't make any sense. They're irrational. And yet we listen to them. And so really the lack of rationality and the extreme thoughts that I that I was feeling as I was going skydiving. Of course, I researched the place. They never lost anybody. I did, I did all of that. Yeah. And, and then going through these motions. And as soon as I saw the first people jump out, I started cursing. <laughs> yeah. It was very comical, actually, the whole thing. But I still went for it. They say, do it scared. I still went for it. And as soon as I made that decision, I was on the threshold with the plane and he said you're are you ready I said I'm not but let's go Hmm. and I just jumped face the fear and do it anyway right that's it yes I had Mm -hmm. the best experience in my life it it just quieted my mind all of a sudden because there was no control there was nothing it was just more just being in that present moment but it it just taught me something about myself about all the fears that are going through my mind that don't make any sense. And the experience was just amazing. Hmm. And I just thought if I could jump out of a plane, I could quit my job and start my own business, right? (laughs) And so, and I literally, it was a Saturday, I handed in my resignation on a Monday. (laughs) So what a great metaphor for life, right? Yes. I mean, it It really is because you're sitting at the, so many things. I mean, you've got your, you've got your comfort zone around you and then you're at the edge of the plane and you're jumping off and it's like going from your, you can, I had a previous guest who was talking about going from a comfort zone to a growth zone and then to an, a panic zone. So there's different stages, but if you do go from the growth comfort zone to the, to, to jump off the plane or get rid of the career or whatever is holding you back, then you get into a a growth zone. And so the fact that you took the courageous step to jump, jump off the plane and leave the career is, is, is remarkable. And that, I mean, that in itself, I don't know if I could do that, but that's a, that's a really great uh, way to describe how you felt. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's everybody's journey is different. Mm Mm-hmm. For me, it was that control that I needed to let go and the surrendering. And that's what jumping off a plane and trusting your life with a complete stranger (laughs) did for me, is that it really gave me that a taste of what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
You also spoke about when you, the thoughts that go through your head. So, uh, and those are, as you know, inner critic thoughts is like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? And what's going to, in this case, what are people going to say? What if I die or whatever, all those what ifs. And it's all about the future. And, and you mentioned that being in that instance, you were in the present moment. So that's so important for us to realize that all those fears that we have are fears about future. Yes. Right. And they're not real. And a lot of them are irrational. And, and that's what I say about fear is fear is not something to conquer. Fear is something to work with because it's part of you, right? If you're trying to conquer uh, a part of you, you're not going to win. You're fighting within yourself. Right. And, but you give it an outlet and you just say, okay, I understand you're trying to protect me from all of this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And, and I'll be fine. So that fear no longer comes back in, even though, making that decision seemed to be the easiest decision, right? Mm -hmm. After that adrenaline rush and all of that, yes, I can do this, pumped myself. Sustaining it was actually harder for me. Mm. In other words, not thinking about going back. That was the hardest part for me because when you go in with your expectations, you know, I did so, especially when you reach a certain level in your career and you're like, I did so great here this is going to be a piece of cake. And you have these expectations that you're going to just take all your experience and it's going to be all 100% relevant. And you realize now that you're actually starting from scratch. You have your experiences, but there's the learning curve is huge as an entrepreneur, especially when you don't know what you want to do when you go into an area that you d- you've never done before. Yes. So the learning curve is huge and it's humbling. Yes. And, 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 it, and it, it puts you in a place sometimes where, again, those fears start coming. It's like, what are you doing to yourself? Mm. You used to make all this money and you were comfortable and, you have, and now you're jumping around doing all this <laughs> stuff. And you don't know if it's going yes. to be, it's going to make any money. And what are you going to do? You're wasting time. You could have been putting yeah. more money in your savings. Again, the thought come, come back about, well, did I make the right choice? And should I just give up? Hmm. And that story for me was a year in the making after I left of the back and forth. I'm going to make this happen. Oh, maybe I'll just go to corporate and do this part time and then have a paycheck and the security. So, so, I mean, I think people really need to be aware of that, that the entrepreneur route is not the easy route. Hmm. And that's, that's what I was going to ask you next is that we all, and we talk a lot about obstacles here in this Mm -hmm. podcast and how does one face those obstacles and how maybe you can get into some that you talked about it already, their outer obstacles, like, Oh my God, how am I going to replace the salary that I probably left or, but then there's the inner obstacles that well, as well, that tell you, you can't do this. Are you crazy? Or what are people going to think? All those other things. So maybe you can describe some of those obstacles and also advise women who are looking to make a change. I mean, women and men, but mostly we have women listening to this podcast is what would you advise them if, if they're looking to make that change? Yeah. And I think the first one is to, is to really make sure you're secure financially. I think the, the, the thing that helped me personally is that I did, even though I didn't accept that part, I did operate with the premise that I was not going to make any money for 12 months. And so I planned for that financially. I always say you don't want to replace the lack of fulfillment, the lack of unhappiness with the uncertainty of your financial life. So those are both really, really important pieces of the puzzle. And I think having a budget and having a plan, a financial plan is key. And whatever you think your expectations are, if you're saying, oh, six months will take me, plan for a year. Mm -hmm. This is what I was thinking in my in my mind. Just double it because I don't know what would happen, and yeah, and things did come out where it took me that long. But I think the financial having a secure financial plan and and budgeting and having that is really really important before you take the plunge. Mm-hmm. That's great advice. Yeah. Yes. The mm-hmm. other part really is, and and again, that would quiet down some of that internal external fears. Yes. The other part is that awareness and the self searching, the understanding, really getting to know who you are, what your weaknesses and your your comfort zones are, and what your zone of genius is. 
-hmm. and understanding both of these elements, you will go through these steps of, Hey, I think I need to do it. And, and I was getting called by recruiters, right? Oh, there's this great VP global supply chain role out there. And I considered it, even though I knew that it wasn't the right mode. I still went on an interview right? Right. and I still considered it and I went through it. But every time I actually did something that was not in alignment, I felt a physical part of me. My heart would constrict. As soon as I would start talking with these people, I felt the, the same way. It's almost like I was reliving the stuckness and that feeling that I had in corporate and the joy kind of went away. Somebody mm-hmm. said like that your joy is your meter. Yes. And these conversations about these jobs suck the joy out of me. <laughs> so, <laughs> just the conversations in themselves. Yeah, stay away. Yes. yes because, <laughs> yeah. Because it's not just a conversation. It's literally saying when you're having this conversation, you're saying, I'm going to give up on my dream and go back. And that's what creates these these feelings. It's not mm-hmm. necessarily the conversations. These were really nice people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. The thought of going back. Yeah. What you, a couple of things you said are so important. Firstly is, is the financial part and make sure you're comfortable. But the other thing is, is how do we, what we need to really do is look at our strengths, our, our skills and our values and how are those changing and how can we align what, what we perhaps the skills we have and our changing values and do that, do something that would align with both could be something completely different, but you also have to understand what you're capable of and what you've done and celebrate what you've achieved. So interesting. So how did you end up finding your purpose and how did you, what did you do next? Yeah. So I think for me, the biggest part was to leverage my knowledge of astrology and numerology And in the past, I used to use these tools for prediction, right? I wanted to control the future. I wanted to see what's going to happen next month. Where am I going to travel for my birthday so that I can make sure the year is going to work? Was that a hobby that you had? So yeah, it was something that I just always was fascinated with. I I actually studied it with many, with people and I studied it online. And it was always, I was, I always liked the predictive ability of it. That's kind of my control mechanism of a, I'm a Virgo. So that's, that's part of it. I'm a Leo. So (laughs) (laughs) it's like, you need to plan, you need to understand, you need, you need to have that. And so for me, that's what I used it. But when I was at this crossroads and I'm like, what do I want? Who am I? And what do I want? Then I started leveraging astrology and numerology for their analytics to analyze and to give me some type of, of, of tools and information about me and about my purpose rather than trying to predict the future with it. By knowing this information about me, I can create my future. I don't need to predict it. And so that was for me the big part was when I started looking at astrology and numerology with a different lens and a different purpose, which is to can I find, if it can tell me so much, can it tell me why I'm here on this earth? Hmm. And so that's what, what started the whole process. And that's how I built my whole formula to help others do the same. But I found four key data points in astrology. And I started learning about different elements of astrology. So for example, I used to use just Western astrology. But I started learning more about esoteric astrology, which is the astrology of the soul. And so the combination of, I used to look at astrology and numerology for my personality and what I valued on the outside. What can I get from there? Where can I go? Who's compatible with me in terms of certain things? And now it's more about what can it tell me about me? And so that shift that happened is really how I found my purpose. And it was really, really clear on it. It was an aha moment where I was kind of going through different books, right? And and I'm like, okay, I've never, I saw this like a North Node, for example, in astrology. And I never really looked at that piece because I just, I think I wasn't ready for it. And now that I looked at that and and start understanding some of the cycles that we go to as human beings, Mm -hmm. where where if you believe there's some astrological beliefs and esoteric beliefs that the soul starts to take over at 35, 
And that's why some of the people's values starts changing. And then the soul actually, and then the spirit takes over at 49. So, so these are some of the beliefs, whether you believe that or not, you do notice that there are changes that are happening in your life around some of these milestone years, 35, 42, and 49. And I went back to my life and I said, what happened to me at 35? I actually filed for divorce. (laughs) My whole life changed. and, And this was when I got my first job that really pushed me on that. At 42 is when I decided no longer was going through so much internally. That's the crisis moment or dark night of the soul moment where who I thought I was just disintegrated. And I had a lot of other crises moment that changed who I am. And then as I'm looking forward to 49, I am so excited about 49 because I feel that I'm more prepared. And if I didn't know what was going on back then, and if I continued on, on this road, and if I didn't have the courage to follow my purpose and my fulfillment, I would come to 49, it would be another crisis moment. And then at 56, another crisis moment. And, and so those are the, the key years and they call them the seven year season or seven year cycles where there are these moments of, of decision, of choices, of crossroads mm-hmm. and you make the right decision. And so, and so that's what validated for me some of these esoteric concepts, because I do believe, but I don't believe without facts and data in front of me. (laughs) Yes. So, okay. You said 35, 42, 49, 56, and then? And then you add seven to that, 63. Yes. Okay. Every seven year, and it starts at zero, zero to seven, seven to 14. So, so is that the case? I mean, is that, is that for everyone? Is that? Okay. And it, and it's based on it's based on astrology and, and is it based on when you're born or is it based on yeah so the seven year cycle is more concept from numerology okay and I think Rudolf Steiner talked about a, a spiritual life map and he basically said that we as we're going through a physical life we're going through a spiritual transformation as well and it's these seven year cycles come to this culmination of the spiritual did you learn are you ready to make a decision are you ready to move and that's why like you go into your 40s and 50s and people say it's midlife crisis it's really not a midlife crisis it's a moment of questioning it's a moment of a realization and sometimes these realizations come with at a cost they come with a level of crisis or with some kind of tower moment that happens in your life but that's the time where we actually make the conscious choice of how you're going to live your life. Your life actually starts at 50. <laughs> Thank <Because> you. <laughs> before, you're yes. Yes. Before you were just learning. You were just trying to figure out who you are. And then by 50, if you follow the path and you lived your life and you're awake, aware, then you step fully into who you came here to be. And, and then what you came here to contribute to society and step in fully into your purpose so you can realize it. Now, some people, obviously, they're outliers, right? And some people step into their purpose so much early, you see so many people that know where they're going and, and can execute it. But the, but the majority of us go through these seven-year cycles and, and as you go back, encourage your audience also to go back and say, hey, what happened at 35? What happened at 42 would happen at 49. Yeah, I'm going to go do that. <laughs> yeah. And you'll notice there are some decision points, some moment of realization, something that actually made you decide left or right in your life. Mm-hmm. Something happened. And, so and I, trigger know, points, right? yeah, I tested it with like family, my clients, people around me and things like that these aha moments are like, Oh, <laughs> this yes. is what happened. <laughs> so. It's actually very, very fascinating. Thank you for sharing that. I, I think it's, it's almost comforting in a way when you said that 50 is the age that you really discover your, it can be the best stage of your life. And that's the whole reason for this podcast. And for my whole business is I completely agree that, that, that word crisis is not the the right word. I mean, it's how you deal with these moments of decisions? Do you make them work for you or against you? 
Yeah. And uh, it's an opportunity, not a crisis. And the, the fact that there's actually numerical or astrological basis behind it is very, very fascinating. Yeah. And, yeah. and it just explains what you're going through. You're not losing your mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think that's, for me, the, the comforting aspect. And I like that you use that word. There's an explanation to all of this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's based in science. I'm a scientific, I have a scientific background, too. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any books or anything that you can recommend people to read? Yeah, on? I, I will definitely have a list for you to you share. You can put them in the I'll, links and the yeah, show links. I will do that. Yeah, do that it. would be amazing. Wow. Yeah. So then, so then you took that knowledge that you gained from, you already had the knowledge, but you applied it into your own life to find your purpose. And so are you teaching people how to do that now? Or are you helping them through these different um, seven-year cycles? Hi, my friend, Kavita here. Do you often feel blocked from moving forward? We all feel that way at times. These are referred to as energy blocks. I've created a short, actionable PDF guide to help you release your negative energy blocks. Click the link in the description to download it now for free. Now, let's get back to the episode. So, so really part of my purpose is to do many things. Yeah. So if I, so I give you like what my life purpose is, is to lead with innovative concepts in existing things, right? So inspire and lead with innovative concepts to have people look at things that were there. I'm not inventing anything differently. And so, and so that's why, and this is kind of where the choice comes in. You can do astrology and numerology, but it's not going to tell you, okay, now be, go and become a coach. Now go and become a teacher. There are other elements that are going to come, but you have the grand plan. The how is up to you. The when is up to you and your experiences and what you have done in the past. Mm. But you have the grand plan and you know what you need to do it. And part of my, my astrology is to do multiple things. I relish my joys in the creation, not in the maintenance. (laughs) So I like the creation. I like starting new things. Yes. And so that's why I went to coaching first, because my first instinct was, I need to share this with people. Like people need to know this. It's so easy to find your purpose. There's so many people who are struggling and, and like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. And being in all of these wasting time. This is how I see it. Efficiency is another thing. Yes. Yeah, you're wasting time going through life, settling, trying to figure out, oh, I don't know. It's not for me. I'm not supposed to be. This Only rich people have a passion and purpose. People confuse mm. passion and purpose. And so my first instant was how do I share it with others? And that's why coaching was the first expression of that purpose. It's how do I share it with others? And so that's part of what I do in my coaching is I created something called the career and purpose blueprint. Mm-hmm. And I, and to be honest, I wanted to do it in career because that's the area where I struggled the most. That's the area where I was feeling the most unfulfilled. Yes. And that's the area that weighed me down and around me in the corporate world. So many people are the same way. There's so much, I call so much unhappiness in the corporate world. And that's why my mission is to raise the happiness quotient because it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to go create your own business for you to be happy and fulfilled. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's not for everybody and you can go and find another job in corporate or just make your job differently. And that will give you the fulfillment, but you have to know what brings you fulfillment. Yes. And you have to know what are the areas of your comfort zone that you need to transcend And that's what I got from the astrology and numerology. It was just a quicker way for me to realize, okay, that's the grand plan. Those are the big issues I need to deal with. These are the big learnings that I want. And that is my contribution, my mission to humanity. And that gives you that. But you still need to do the work. You still need to find your values. You're not negotiables, right? There's still a lot of things that need to be done but I just it felt that the blueprint of, of your, your astro numerology using these four data points in these charts to literally tell you who you are and to literally tell you what is the career that will bring you fulfillment. 
And you will have a lot of options when you do that. There's so many options, which you have to constrain later with your competencies, your skill sets, with your, because you want to succeed, right? Yes, you don't yes. want to just, it's not, it's not about passion. It's not about going after something you love. It's about purpose. It's very different. So that's why my first instinct was, okay, I'm going to become a coach because I want to share this. Yes. But also other, like you said, other expressions of my purpose came about. One of them is recruiting. I come from a supply chain background and I always saw that the function of demand planning, special planning in general, was a function that's misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And everything that that function wanted to do in the organization was fought, questioned. And a lot of the time the organization say this function doesn't work because they don't understand what it's supposed to do and they just put the wrong people in there. Right. And so, so I wanted to change that as well. And that's where my recruiting came in, where I only help corporate companies that are willing to make a change. And it's a small portion of what I do, but it's something that brings me that fulfillment because I really love the planning space in supply chain. And I kind of felt bad leaving that. That was the one thing is like, I really loved what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't want to, I didn't want to give that that's up. Nice. You kept that up and you, yeah. and, and and you so put it together yeah. with what you're doing. Yeah. That's fantastic. Exactly. And yeah. that's, that's the whole thing about purpose is you weave in mm -hmm. your passions, you weave in your experience, you weave in everything, mm -hmm. but you have to have a clear goal. <laughs> that expression can look very different and you can change your mind about what you want to do. You can say my career and purpose is a coach and you could try it for six months. You're like, you know what? It's great, but I'm not, marketing is not my thing. I don't want to do it. I don't want to be on social media. I don't want to do certain things. And so maybe it's not a coach. Maybe I can become a consultant within a company, right? So, so you go through all of these different things. And what I did for myself is I just created a large pool of, because <laughs> I like that excitement. Yes, yes. And so, and, yeah. and the last part of that was Gen X Woman, which, which was started as my co my friend and co-founder, Megan and I, we were colleagues in our old job and we had a lot in common. We both had single in our forties. We didn't have children. So it was kind of not the traditional path yes. of a 40 something. And we couldn't find our space. We couldn't find a place for us. We were either too young for the over 50 or, or too old for the millennial yes. <laughs> areas. And so, so we were in that middle place. We we're like, well, we can't find our place. Let's create ours. Nice. <laughs> and, and that's what started with Gen X Woman. And it morphed into much bigger than that. It became a more of a mission because we started seeing the narrative around Generation X and how these women are portrayed as sad, angry, sleepless, desperate, they're doing, so a lot of what was portrayed out there is our, our miseries, as I would like to say, but none of our accomplishments. And so we wanted to just change that a little bit. So it started with this and then moved to, okay, now we're in marketing or we're helping brands because we noticed that brands can't market to us. They don't know how to talk to us. Right. They want to sell us a product, like a menopause product with an 80 year old woman, or they want to sell us a clothes with a 20 year old woman. Yes. And so represent yeah. us, reflect us. And so, so that's how this whole thing kind of moved into that direction. I would not recommend to anybody to do three things. Sometimes. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting you say that you didn't find a, a place to go to or a platform. And that's how I felt as well with when I was going through, in this case, it was my early fifties, right? Well, I'm still in my early fifties, but, and probably that 49 age that you talked about. And <laughs> I couldn't find anything. And it was disparate places that you, you can look and find some help, but not a comprehensive platform. So I created it for midlife and, and you created it for, for Gen X women. What is a Gen X woman? Just so people know, like I, I, I had to <laughs> Google that myself. Yeah, no problem. So, so, the, so Generation X is yeah. defined by, I think, Pew Research between 1965 and 1980. Okay. So people that were born between these two age brackets are considered Generation X. But what we call it as Gen X is a state of mind. So we know a lot of older millennials that identify as Gen X and, and a much older Generation X women 
or maybe that may be considered like what we call the cuspers that would be considered a boomer or silent generation, but they're, they actually consider themselves more Gen X, like Kamala Harris, for example, wears Converse. So, so yes. <laughs> there's a whole discussion about Kamala, whether she, she what generation she what it, how, Yeah, I, I mean, I was born in 1966, so. Yeah, so you're definitely Gen yes. X. <laughs> Four. So she's like what just one year outside oh, okay. of uh, okay. outside of that. I'm like, well, we're gonna claim her. She doesn't she doesn't want yeah, <laughs> I agree with you. I, I, I hate those stereotypes of any any age because it's just it's it's I, I think age is a state of mind and it's a state of your how you feel about yourself and uh, it's obviously there's something to the certain ages or the certain years that you're born, but I, I love the fact that you and Megan are trying to raise this kind of awareness that we're not angry <laughs> or <Yeah>. sad. <laughs> we're actually, we have a lot to offer. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah, we're just getting started. And yeah. I think that's the key is, and again, numerology actually validates that point. It's an, like you said, it midlife is an opportunity, not a crisis. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a starting point, not an ending point. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to understand that. And there's a numerologist, I think, Gail Minogue, She's interesting because she says that we're supposed to live 120 years, but because we don't have goals for the 60 to 90 years, that's why we decide to exit early. Um, And it's about setting life goals, not retirement goals at midlife. It's not about winding down. And I think that's, if there's any message to your audience is this, you're just getting started. Like the past behind you, that's you getting your training wheels on. It's just learning who you are. It's building the competencies, building that financial net so that you can finally step into who you... Step into your greatness. Yes, yes. yes. And, and get, That's you know. really, it's, it's amazing how you've weaved all, all, all of your interests and, and, your, and you're doing so many different things. That's really incredible and very motivating for a lot of people, I think. Oh, that's great. Like where do you I find the time? Do you ever sleep? I wouldn't recommend, that's I said, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I would not recommend it if, yeah. you have, you know, if you want to have a life. Listen, I'm single. I don't have children. And I just love what I do. And so, so for it me. It shows. I can see you. <laughs> it doesn't feel like work, but it still takes a toll on my health when I overdo it. Of course. And, and, and there are times when everything happens at the same time in all these three areas and there is overwhelm. So mm-hmm. unless you, it's part of your makeup, it's part of your blueprint to like go out and do so many things. Don't be like, it's very hard to be the hummingbird rather than the jackhammer, right? The jackhammer. Yes. <laughs> well, so. yeah, that's, that's why we have play in our power purpose play, because we have to remember the play meaning self-care and being in the moment and, and making sure that you have to look after yourself in addition to trying to find your purpose and and taking the power within you to, to really, to go after what you want. So that's so important. I definitely love the name of your platform oh. because that is really the, it's a full encompassing name for what's happening right now for us in midlife. It's Thank you. power, purpose, and play. That's yes. It's yes. Thank 100%. you. 100%. <laughs> On that, in all your work that you've done with your, as a coach and, and with Gen X women and, and, and the other adventures, have you seen that there is a, a shift in, in women and the, and the voices the women have now, do you, do you feel that it's, we're being heard more, that society is listening more? And I, I know that you're trying to do that with Gen X women, but what, uh, how, what are your thoughts on that? I think, I think women's voice are getting louder, but there's a lot of work to be done in terms of being heard, but it's a step. And I think as women of our generation, and I think regardless of whether you subscribe to a certain generational name, we were brought up with a certain ethic of, of put your head down, hard work. Seen but not heard. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And your work will speak for you. And you get into corporate and you're like, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> you got to advertise who you are. You got to speak about who you, who you are. And there's still kind of a little bit of, of shame, reluctancy around visibility, around speaking our voices the right way and not seeming like we're angry or bitter. You know? So there's mm-hmm. this balance that you have to do. And I think 
I think we've, we're seeing now more than ever a lot more voices. And then the Forbes 50 over 50 is a great step in terms yes. of, okay, well, let's recognize that there is something. Why have we been recognizing the accomplishment of the youth in terms of money measurement, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and then we're not recognizing the, the role of somebody in their 50s in, in terms of mentorship, in terms of role modeling, in terms of money, in terms of power. There's so much that these women are doing. I mean, in, even innovation. Mm-hmm. And we're just not known for that. And I think we just need to change that the mind, the expectation or the view that a woman in her 40s and 50s acts like this. She's yes. winding down. She's ready to go. She's not worth investing in, even whether it's a business or whether it's a corporation in training. They don't see these women mostly, but men as well, right? In their 40s and 50s worth the investment as they're on their way out. And I think now that our voices are being heard and a lot louder voices, you see that now Look, we're demanding more, even for menopause products, you'll see a lot more clean products and, and more. Yeah in terms of that, I think there's a lot of work. And the, the work is not just external with society. When I speak to women in their 40s, they aren't, they're in their 50s, they're under a lot of, they're under this veil. They're, they're, they're carrying so much, their expectations of themselves. And I think they just need to lift that stuff up, just throw that garbage <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, yes, I, I so agree with you. I mean, that 50 after 50 list, that was great. But I mean, it's the first one they've ever done. Like, really? It's, it's about time. And I, I agree with you. There's there's a lot of, I would say, baggage or a lot of these ex- expectations. And there's also the fact that we've always really looked after everyone else and ourselves really, in, in many cases, coming last. So I, I completely agree that voices are being heard more. And I hear that more with every guest that I that come on is that, is that it's, it's, we are being heard and we just have to, we have to voice our opinion and that, that's so important. So that's and amazing. more than our opinion. I think we have to stand in our own power is mm-hmm. what I say mm-hmm. and really understand you, what you're, what you've accomplished in this. Don't, don't like think it's, oh, I should have done more. I I speak to so many amazing women that think they should have done more or they sacrificed one area of life or another and now it's regret. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I say it's my time now. I have a course right now that it's it's looking at that. It's my time now. It is your time now because you can do anything and you're not old. You're not too old. There's so much more ahead of you and you need to tap into the greatness that you have within you. I, I think it's a great time for programs like this. Yes, I mean, my coaching is not necessarily for, for midlife women. It's, it's just open. And, but I find more for my coaching, you know, more millennial women are interested because when I speak to, to women in their 40s and 50s, it's, there's so many layers that they need to peel through. And I think courses like yours and, and, and other empowerment courses that would help them to be ready to know what they're supposed to be doing and then go after it. Yes. It's one thing to know, but if you don't have what it takes to go after it, and I mean what it takes, not necessarily in terms of skill or external, but the internal grit and the internal yes. desire yes. to truly live your highest potential, right? Truly live the greatest expression of who you are. Because we came here to live. We did not come here to do. And I, and it took me so long to come to this realization myself, because all I did was work hard. I had to prove this. I had to prove that from my background, I'm a woman, Middle Eastern, you know, you come in with that baggage of what are you supposed to be as this person? And you're fighting against that version. You're fighting against that view. You're fighting against what people think of this person. They're not going to invest in this person. This person has to work doubly hard yes <laughs> and so that's gonna that was my my whole life is just to work to prove to it's still very exhausting yes to be very honest I, know. With you. <laughs> I know i can and relate so, and so and so now i got to a point where no all i have to do is stand in my own power i don't have i have nothing to prove and i think 
that's one of the beauty thing that when you get into your 40s and your 50s, you care less about <laughs> improving anything. Exactly. <laughs> it's All just right. like, uh-uh, yes. no. <laughs> no, I don't need to prove nothing to you. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And it just becomes more about you. Mm-hmm. And, and, and being selfish for us is actually good. Mm. Be selfish. And selfish doesn't mean buying stuff for you and it doesn't taking time for yourself just 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 looking after yourself and really understanding what is it that I really want and what is it that I have to offer and your work is incredible and congratulations for bringing out these messages in so many different ways that you're doing it and tying in in numerology and astrology it's very fascinating I'm going to read up on it because I want to learn more (laughs) it's just so I haven't had anybody with an open mind that looked through some of these pieces, right, of their numerology, like their life path, for example, and truly tried to understand it, who didn't, like, who found something that didn't resonate with them. Hmm. You know, what I really liked about what you said is that I'm looking forward to 49. So that's, yes, that's, that's, that's such a, yes, you that's such a great uh, like, outlook. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is so unusual because everyone's like, pe- most people will say, Oh my God, 50. Hmm. Right. And here you I'm are. I'm not saying, looking forward to menopause or no. using more of my collagen. <laughs> I'm not looking forward <laughs> to the territory. I'm just looking forward to, to even you see me and you think like, oh, I got it all figured out. I'm still learning. Oh, we all and are. I just yeah. feel like at 49, I will know for sure. There's, there's going to be like this moment of even more realization, more stepping in, more let's go, like making a much bigger impact or, or something more around my legacy rather than just my purpose and my career. And so that's why I'm, 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 I feel there's this, this is the time for me to build for my 50s, for my 60s, for the rest of my life. That's when I start living because before I was existing, and I think you were existing in certain, so many paradigms that were society, this, 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 and listening to other people and having to do certain things. And, and in f- my fifties, like five is the number of freedom. And that's when you just, dis- that's when you discover who you truly are. You can be free to be yourself if you did the work. Right. right. Yes. I think it, it comes at a cost and that's why there's this crisis. And sometimes the crisis is, is external events telling you it's time to stop and you should listen. And a lot of people, unfortunately, they don't listen because they're too afraid. Mm -hmm. And so the fifties are fun when you've listened, when you made the changes and and you went with your intuition and I'm, I'm literally, I'm looking forward to it. That's amazing. (laughs) I can, I can attest to that. The fifties are fun. Uh, They're great. Yeah. They're amazing. (laughs) I know you care less about stuff. There's just just an element of freedom of just being yourself. And I've seen some amazing, amazing women in their fifties and sixties. I'm like, this this is where I'm going. Fantastic. (laughs) Is that what the astrology astrology predicts for you is uh, the great, the great fifties and sixties? So, so yeah, so it's numerology, right? Oh, numerology, numerology, sorry. It's the one that talks about the, yeah. the, the ages, the numbers, yes, yes, things yes. like that. Yeah. Astrology is more, astrology really helped me find my purpose, my true soul's purpose. And, and, and with that, the lessons that I need to learn, <laughs> which, is, which is beyond your comfort zone. And I think that's where the two, I see that they, they actually really complement each other because they t- tell you different things about yourself. In, in the way I look at it in my practice, I really use numerology, just one data point from numerology to look at more the outside of what I want, right? Mm-hmm, How mm-hmm. do you bring this into, into fruition? How do you make it manifest, right? And so, and more astro- astrology, more the soul mission message, yes. the, the more of a, the, the bigger picture, right? The spiritual yes, picture. Yes. Understood. Okay. Yeah. So, nice. so that's, it's, and you can use numerology for spiritual mission as well. I mean, it tells you so much hmm. about, I mean, the freedom of it is, is the freedom to, to mm-hmm. be more spiritual, to, to, get out of the spiritual closet. <laughs> a lot of yes. us, a lot of us used to be in corporate, like you couldn't be yourself. You couldn't 
Yes. Well, we f- I definitely find that as you as you get colder, you're also looking at internally and spiritually what what is it that I really what matters to me. So mm-hmm. all the messages that you've shared today have just been so inspiring and so interesting to learn about. And so thank you so much for, for, for sharing everything that you have and where can, where can people find you, Dina? And what, uh, what's your next big thing or. <laughs> My next big thing is to try to stick to three things. But... Yes. Don't add any more. <laughs> Don't add any more. Trust me, like ideas are popping up 24 seven. Right. Right. So yes, I have my website, ginakmartins.com. I'm mostly on LinkedIn. I'm not on the other social media platforms. I post a lot on LinkedIn if you want to find me there. Okay. And like I said, the next big thing for me is really growing now and taking to the next level all these these three expressions of my purpose, right? Mm-hmm. And I think, I think the, the, the beauty of it is that you're not limited to one. And so and so your audience hopefully can be inspired to to they don't have to get it right the first time and they don't have to just do one thing. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Maybe not three, but definitely. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. Well, we'll have all your show notes, all your links in our show notes. And I, I would encourage anyone who is interested in, what Dina had to say to, to check her out and to check out Gen X women as well. I think it's a great publication with a lot of interesting information and uh, I loved our conversation. Thank you so much for, for the inspiring messages and go jump off that plane, I guess is the, <laughs> is the <laughs> metaphorically is the message, right? So yeah, thank you, Kavita. Absolutely. I guess if you get anything out of this is there is a rhyme, there is a reason to the madness, I would say. Yes. <laughs> and just jump. Just jump. Let's just just do it. Just do it. Thank you so much, Kavita. Really, Fantastic. Really Thank you Thank so you much, much, Dina. And yeah, and I love I love what you stand for and Power Purpose Play is just an amazing space for women and with your your coaching and your support of Gen X women. I think a lot of us do need that support, do need it from role models that are in the same age group mm-hmm. and that have done it themselves. Right. And so, and I think there's not that, that many of us out there and, and I'm glad that you're out there spreading. Oh, that thank you. Well. That, that means a lot. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye. I'm sure you were as inspired as I was by the words and wisdom of Dina Martins, as we discussed all things, numerology, astrology, and a Gen X woman. Dina's passion for life and helping others find their purpose is unique, as are her views on how we are just getting started in our 50s. As Dina describes, it's about setting life goals, not retirement goals at midlife. It's not about winding down, you're just getting started. Here are her main takeaways. You are at a crossroads where you can decide to continue on that road or make a change to a more fulfilling life. Number two, We think external validations are a milestone for happiness, joy, or fulfillment, but they are really not. Number three, courage is like building a six pack. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to build that one muscle at a time. Four, we have so many thoughts and fears that don't make any sense and are irrational when we decide to leave a comfort zone, and yet we listen to them anyway. Five, skydiving is a representation of letting go and surrendering, letting go of control. Sometimes we just need to let go of control, surrender, and trust. Six, fear is not something to conquer. Fear is something to work with because it's part of you. Seven, the soul starts to take over at 35, and that's why some people's values start changing. The spirit starts taking over at 49. Change is happening in people's lives as a result of these milestone years. Eight, we're just getting started, and numerology validates that. It's about setting life goals, not retirement goals. Nine, truly live your highest potential. Truly live the greatest expression of who you are. Because we came here to live, we did not come here to do. We are so grateful you're here listening to our podcast and learning from our amazing guests. If you enjoy these episodes, please share with your friends. There is no greater compliment. Our goal is to help you move past your comfort zone into your growth zone and to give you the tools to do just that. We are starting a waiting list for our signature program, It's My Time Now, How to Rediscover Yourself in Midlife. Email me at kavita at powerpurposeplay.ca if you're interested in being part of this waiting list. 
It's a seven week transformational program of rediscovery. If you'd like me to be your personal coach in your own journey of transition, contact me as well for a complimentary introductory session. I can't wait to see what you bring out into the world with your uniqueness and greatness. Join our free community at powerpurposeplay.ca and join the movement of women in midlife who are saying, it's my time now. In love and light, until next time.